spade. Forgive me. When you talk to me about your love, I feel somehow dull inside. I don't know what to say. Forgive me. I can't say anything. Good night. Wait! If you knew how I suffered, because in this house another life is fading. Yours! I mean, what are you waiting for? What fact you decide when he's holding you back? Oh, please try to understand me. Fanya! You're drunk! Yes, well, there is that possibility. Where's the doctor? He's in there, he's staying the night. Well, there is that possibility. Isn't everything in the world a possibility? Why have you been drinking today? Something to do. Don't stop me, Elena. You don't usually drink like this. Or talk so much. Go and sleep it off. When I'm with you, I feel everything is pointless. You're so exquisite. Years ago, I used to meet her at my sister's house. She was 17, I was 37. So I did not fall in love with her then and ask her to marry me. And thus, the negative view of resolution is sickly the old and pale past. She would be my wife now. And the storm would have woken the two of us. The thunder would frown your life. I hold in my arms and I whisper, don't be afraid, I'm here. <laughs> Come, that would be good. <laughs> Man. 
Sorry for the professor. What? Oh, leave me alone. Nobody shy to be in love with this lady wife. She and I are just friends. That didn't take long. <laughs> what do you mean by that? A man and a woman only become friends by following a particular procedure. First, they're acquaintances. Next, they're lovers. Only after that can they be friends. That's impossible, of course. Uh, yes, well, um, I admit I've become rather coarse and um, as I don't need to tell you what I drink. Um, I tend to get like this once a month and uh, when I'm like this, I turn rather nasty and rather insulting. <laughs> I don't give a toss about anything. The most delicate operations, fine, I say. I'll do them. I go like a dream. I concoct a lot of plans for the future of mankind. And do they seem to me to be the thoughts of an obsessive? They do not. They will bring stupendous advantages. Stupendous. But I'm like this. I have a particular way of looking at the world. All of you, my dear friends, seem to me insects, microbes, play pineapple. My dear friend, there's nothing I'd rather do, but you know, the whole house. Everyone's sleeping. Play! A little brandy will slide down nicely. Come on. There's a drop left in the road now. And don't break. We'll ride over to my house. Agreed? <laughs> I've got this medical assistant. He never says, agreed, but always, agreed. He makes me laugh. Are we agreed? Uncle Bon, you've got drunk with the doctor again. That's how he is, but at your age, it's tawdry. Age has nothing to do with it. If you don't have a life, you have to drink one else. Better than emptiness, isn't it? Our haze cut. Day after day it rains, everything's rotting, and you sit here dreaming. The paperwork's weeks behind. What do you care? I'm trying to keep up with it. I'm running out of strength. It won't happen again. Now go. Well, I promise I do. By the time the horses are honest, it'll be their life. It, it's still passing down. Stay in the morning. The storm's moving on. We'll only catch the last drops. Time to go. And please, don't call me out for your father again. I'd have him scout. And here's your instrument. I advise lying down. He says, Pa, today he wouldn't say a word to me. He's spoiled. Would, would you like something to eat? Well, if you're happy. Oh, I love midnight feet. I'm sure we'll find something. I gather that in his life he's had great success with women, and it's they who've spoiled him. Do you like cheese? 
had no food all day, not the alcohol. No. Your father is not an easy man. Eh? We were alone, and I can say what's on my mind. If I were to live in this house, I wouldn't last a week. The atmosphere would smother me. Your father, obsessed with his garbage books, and Cavana, who is in a deep depression, your grandmother, and on top of everything, your stepmother. What about my stepmother? Everything about a person should be beautiful. The face, the clothes, the soul, the mind. She walks in beauty like the night. All she does is eat, sleep, saunter about in charming as a little That's it. She takes responsibility for nothing. Everyone's straight from her. Is that so? <coughs> I guess it's immoral. <coughs> Why not you harsh? You fed up with life, like our Cavania. So he and I sit and come. <coughs> is your life not enough for you? By himself, I love. I just finished or finished our existence. I despise it every ounce of my being. And me, my personal life. God, that's, that's what it is. Listen. You're walking through a forest on a dark night. You see a speck of light in the distance. At once. You forget how tired you are. How dark it is. You barely notice the thorns scratching your cheek. work harder than anyone else in the district. <coughs> you know that. It's fate. Again and again, it strikes me down. My suffering is sometimes unbearable. And in the distance, what do I see? Nothing. The truth is, I expect it. And it's likely. It's years since I cared for anyone. No one. I feel some tenderness towards your old nanny because of the past. Peasants. You can't tell one from another. The backward. Mind filth. And people with education? <laughs> I can't get on with them. They bore me senseless. All their dear friends and acquaintances are superficial in their thinking and shallow in their emotions. And none of them can see an inch beyond their nose. Imbecile, pack of them. And if there are any of crap more intelligent or insight, it makes them disturbed, remorselessly analyzing the deepest responses and feelings. How they fight! There's no longer. They don't long to sink the teeth into it. They sneak out. I heard you a glance out of the corner of the Ryan pounce. You're a psychopath. Oh, you're possessed. And if they can't think of any other label to stick on your forehead, they say, isn't he peculiar? How peculiar he is. I love the forest. How peculiar. I don't eat meat. How peculiar. It's become impossible to have a pure, simple, spontaneous response to nature. Human beings are you? No. Please. Don't drink anymore. Why not? It's so out of keeping with everything about you. Your voice is gentle. Your manners are refined. I've never met anyone as beautiful. So why behave like an ordinary man who gets drunk and plays cards? Don't do it. How often have you told us? No one creates anymore. All we do is, is destroy what was given us from above. You're destroying yourself. You mustn't. Don't. I beg you. I won't drink it.
Now I'm sober. Look at me. 100% sober. And this is how I'll stay at the end of my days. Where was I? Oh, yeah. My time is up. For me, it's too late. I've grown old. I work too hard. I become cold. My senses are dull. And I'm no longer able to form an attachment to another human being. I love the one. And I never will. The only thing that can summarize who you need is beauty. That I am not quite dead to. Your stepmother could turn my head in an afternoon if she chose to. But that is love. It isn't true affection. What's the matter? Nothing. During Lent, a patient of mine died on a cold form. It's time you forgot about that. If, if I had a friend or a younger sister, and if you found out that she, what if she were in love with you? How would you react? No idea. Not at all. I would make it clear to her that I couldn't love her. I've got too many other things on my mind. If I'm going, I'd better go. Let me, sweetheart, I will chat until morning. I'll leave to a drawing room, or your uncle will never let me go away. younger sister. He had no idea what I was getting at. How terrible I want to be beautiful. Terrible. And, and I'm not. I know I'm not. Last Sunday, I was coming out of church. I heard a woman talking about me. She said she's kind. She has a good heart. What a pity she's not How cool the air is. Where's the doctor? Gone. Sonia, what do you want? How long is your bad temper going to last? How have we ever hurt each other? Why are we enemies? Let's stop. What do you say? I've wanted to see. <laughs> I'll never be angry again. There, that's finished. Hmm? Is, is Father in bed? Oh. Yes, he's in the drawing room. Weeks pass and we barely say a word to each other. God knows why. What's all this? The doctor had a little supper. Mm -hmm. And wine as well. <laughs> well, let us toast our friendship. Let's. We'll drink from the same glass.
from the heart as a friend. Are you happy? No. I was right. One more. Would you rather have married a young husband? <laughs>
professors graciously invited us all to gather here in this drawing room at precisely the moment. A quarter to. We had some great message <coughs> to communicate to the world. Well, it's probably some business matter. Oh, what does he know about business? He writes rubbish, he grumbles, and he nurses grudges. That's the only kind of business he knows. Uncle. Oh, I'm sorry. Look at her. Drifting about, doing nothing, going nowhere. Charming, isn't she? Yes. And you whine on and on. Doesn't it make you feel ill? I'm so bored. It's possible I'm dead. What shall I do with myself? You've nothing to do. If you'd make an effort to find something, like what? Teach, help on the estate, tend the sick, or is that beneath you? Before you and my father arrived, Uncle Viner and I used to drive to market ourselves in self car. Well, I don't know how, but I'm not interested. Well, it's only in political novels that people leap up and start teaching peasants or curing them. How can I? And for no reason, suddenly rush out and educate and heal everybody. But why don't you long to? That's what I can't understand. Give yourself time, the idea will grow on you. Oh, look at you, you're so miserable. But can't you see your boredom's infectious? Look, Uncle Viney does nothing but follow you around like your shadow. I forget my work and spend all day chatting with you. I've become lazy. I can't afford to be. Even the doctor. He used to visit once a month. I have trouble to persuade him. Now he's here every day. Goodbye forest. Goodbye medicine. He's bewitched us all. Oh, don't sit there suffering. Come, my heart, my precious. You know who you are. You're his uncle! <laughs> Your home is in the fishback waters of the river. Blood flows through your veins for once in your life. Let yourself go. Fall in love with the river god. Throw yourself headfirst into the river. Splash! Deep. See the professor in all of his high on the bank wailing. Oh, where is she? Where is she? Oh, please. Leave me in peace. You're so cruel to me. Oh, I'm sorry. My father, peace, peace. Not even an angel would put up with you. You know that. As a sign of peace and harmony, I'll bring you some flowers. I'll get them for you at the door. As autumn days are drawing near, on my soul of rose, they fall a tear. On my soil of rose, let fall a tear.
yes or no? If it's no, you must stop coming here. Chart. Go and tell him I want to talk to him. You won't keep anything from me. <laughs> Darling, of course not. The truth, whatever it is, is never as terrifying as not knowing. Trust me. Yes. I'll say you want to see his chart. No. No, the truth is, is, is better than not knowing. At least then there's hope. What did you say? She's not. I understand her. The poor girl. It's the tedium of this place. No human beings. Just grey mists hovering. <laughs> the only words you hear are banalities from which you can vaguely distinguish arrival. Someone's drinking. Someone's asleep. There. He appears. Utterly unlike ever. Beautiful. Intriguing. Compelling. Like the moon against the dark sky. To yield to his law. To lose control as well. <laughs> Perhaps I've also been swept away. A little. Yes! Well, I'm born when he's not here. And if I think of him, I smile. Uncle Badley says, Rosalka's blood flows in your veins. For once in your life, let yourself go. Well, perhaps I will. Perhaps I should fly away. <laughs> Free as a bird. Far from you all. Forget you ever even existed, any of you. I'm a coward. I'm trapped inside myself. My conscience will torture me. And he comes here every day. And as soon as I think of why, well, I accuse myself. I should be falling on my knees in front of Sonia and begging her to forgive me. But I should weep. Good afternoon. You want to see my wife, Clark? Well, yesterday you promised to show me your chart. Is this a good moment? How do you? Where were you born? In Petersburg. Did you study there? I was trained in music at the conservatory. Hmm, this is not going to interest you. Well, why not? Hmm? I may not have seen much of life in the country, but I've read quite a bit. In this house, I have my own desk. In Barnum's room. When my energy runs out, and about to keep over the exhaustion, I say, to help. I ride over here and amuse myself on our tunes. Varney and Sonia kick away on their candy frames. I sit near them with my paints feeling cozy and warm, and outside the cricket to chirp. I don't indulge them as often, but not. Ladies 
used my map of our district, as it was 50 years ago, where I painted green, dark light, as its forest. So half this whole territory was forested. <coughs> now, where I painted these red crisscross lines over the green, and that was the domain of elk and uh, wild goats. I've marked in all the different species of plants and animals of the lake, the swans, geese, ducks. <coughs> More than I could take in. That's well like clouds. Now, hamlets, villages, and as you can see, scattered around all kinds of settlements, farmsteads, monasteries of the old believers, water mills. Where I painted blue, it indicates cattle and horses. For example, look, this section is dark blue. There were droves of horses. Every peasant has three. <clears throat> Now let's see that here. This is the picture 25 years on, only a third.